Today I'm going to demonstrate two methods for the synthesis of the useful salt manganese sulfate. And the first one is the more direct route of simply dissolving manganese metal in a mixture of hydrogen peroxide and sulfuric acid. This route is okay, but due to a variety of reasons I'll explain later in the video, it's kind of hard to obtain a pure product in this manner. So I'm going to show you a method I think is better. For method number two, I begin by dissolving 30 grams of oxalic acid dihydrate in around 250 milliliters of water. I then add 12 milliliters of concentrated sulfuric acid and mix it thoroughly. Next I begin making small additions of manganese dioxide to the solution and stir thoroughly between each addition to make sure that it doesn't bubble over. What's happening here is a two-step chemical reaction where the manganese dioxide is first reduced by the oxalic acid and then dissolved by the sulfuric acid to produce manganese sulfate, carbon dioxide bubbles, and water. These additions are made until no more bubbling occurs, which indicates that the reaction is complete. And I'll explain now why this is a better method than the direct dissolution of the metal. So basically, unlike strong acids like hydrochloric acid or nitric acid, sulfuric acid is a better dehydrating agent and oxidizer than it is an acid. This means that sulfuric acid behaves more like a weak acid when reacting with metals, especially with its second hydrogen. That said, most metal oxides will react better with sulfuric acid than their metallic form, but the addition of oxalic acid creates a reducing environment that will dissolve them even better. Direct dissolution of the metal usually results in a gross slurry like this, where you have a mixture of the metal, the salt, and leftover sulfuric acid. Anyway, getting back to the video, once I've filtered and crystallized the manganese sulfate made in my second method, I transfer it to a little dish to thoroughly desiccate it. This results in a very clean, pure, and dry product that I'm really happy with. I process the other one the same way, but I first use some isopropyl to try to separate the residual metal and sulfuric acid from my target salt. The product I obtained there is fine and usable for most projects, but the color isn't as good and it's got some dampness almost from residual sulfuric acid that's really hard to separate off. This general idea can be applied to the synthesis of most transition metal sulfates, at least all those that I've tried, so I definitely don't recommend trying to make a metal sulfate from the metal itself. In any case, here are the final product from both methods. The better one is in the centrifuge tube and the other one is in this dish. I hope you enjoyed this process, and if you'd like to see more science, consider giving me a follow.